Hello, this is Brenda Andrum, and I'm a librarian here at Santa Monica College. Today I'm going to show you how to use databases to find information about fairy tales. If you start from the school homepage and you mouse over student services, you can find library between health and well-being and the police. Click on that and it takes you to the library homepage. Many students immediately go to the OneSearch and start searching absolutely everything. Not necessarily the smartest search strategy. So let me show you a better way to do this. If you head into the databases, you'll notice that it's grouped by discipline. Since this is a class on literature, that's exactly where you go. Click on literature. That removes all of the databases from the list that don't have anything to do with your topic and prioritizes the databases that do have to do with your topic. So all the stuff that you need is pretty much at the top of the page. We're going to start in literary sources our largest literary database. If you're not currently logged in at this point, you will need to log in in order to access it, and you use your Canvas logon. Once there, you have a number of options, but we're going to start up here in the basic search. So say I'm interested in fairy tales, just starting off, see what I get. almost 10,000 hits. Now there are a number of different ways you can go from here. You can do a person search, you can look for a specific work, you can look for subjects that are assigned to these or items by specific authors, you can look for articles or books or essays. You can also look at a topic finder. I like starting here. When you go into the topic finder, you can either add new terms or you can take a look at the terms that came up with your original search. You can look for literary fairy tales, French fairy tales, tradition, Grimm. So say I'm interested in Grimm. I can click on that and it also breaks down into further subcategories. Folk tales, old cause yeah, but also incredibly great. Then when I head over here, it will tell me some articles that this specifically has in this database on Grimm. So if I see one that I like, I can click on it, and it will bring up that particular article. The article itself is laid out. As you see, it's a history of the actual Grimm's fairy tales. And it's very long. There's an awful lot of information in these databases. From here, you can cite it, email it, download it to your device, or print it out. The other database that you will want to look at when you're taking a look at information on literature is the Cambridge Companions Online. This is actually a database of Cambridge University Companions to Literature. When I click on that database, completely different interface, but it still has a general search engine that you start off with. So if I'm interested in Grimm, and I search that out, there are 497 results, and not all of them are in English. So I can look over here and it will tell me, hmm, of all of those things, I can only have access to 43. So I make sure that I only get those things that I can actually read and save myself from frustration. Then it tells me we have 36 articles, six chapters from books, and one book. So I can take a look at the type of information I need per the instructions of my um, teacher and say, okay, I need a book for this, I need an article for this, and take that guidance. You can look at subjects that are covered in these articles and you can look at various journals that are covered, as well as publishers. Now maybe I'm interested in this companion to literature. What is this? Not only do I get individual chapters, but I also get a book, The Cambridge Companion to Fairy Tales. So I can take a look at that and see what I can find. This gives me access to the entire edition so I scroll through the page and it can tell me 
Here is everything in the book. I can also search within the book, and it will bring up only that chapter that is specifically on Grimm. When I do that, I can click on the title. I can view it in a PDF. I can save it to a drive, drop it into Dropbox, export a citation. Now notice, unlike the previous database, when I click on the title, I don't actually get the article. In order to get that article, go back to my previous page, and here it is in the PDF, in the HTML. The other difference here is that you can't email it directly from the database. So you have to download the PDF or upload it to the cloud, either one, um, and then email it to yourself if you'd like it in your email. If you have any further questions, on the library homepage, there is an Ask a Librarian chat. This is 24-7 reference chat. Anytime that the library and the campus are open, there should be a librarian here answering it. I say should because sometimes we're teaching, so it might take a little bit of time for us to get to it. And this is actually 24-7, so when the library is closed and it is still during college sessions, so say not between semesters, there will also be librarian coverage, so librarians at other colleges and universities will answer your questions. Good luck on your research.